Hi guys, Victoria Paxton here. Thanks for stopping back by my YouTube channel. So guys, today, oh first, before I get going, um, if you're not, if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll get notified whenever I do a new, put a new video up. I would appreciate it. Like and share, that'd be awesome. Okay, so today I'm going to talk about Teresa Hall Ock. Most people know her name because of the making of a murder on Netflix. Concerning Stephen Avery and his nephew, Brendan Dassey, um, they were convicted of her murder. So let me talk a little bit about her first. She was born March 22nd, 1980 in Kaukana, Wisconsin. She had a degree in photography and was working as a freelance photographer at the time of her death. More specifically, she was taking pictures of cars for sale for Auto Trader magazine. So she was murdered on October 31st, 2005. Stephen Avery and his nephew, Brendan Dassey, were convicted of killing her. So, <clears throat> okay, so let me back up a little bit. In order to talk about her, I need to talk about some of these other things. Okay, so in 1985, Stephen Avery was convicted of sexual assault. In 2003, he was exonerated when DNA evidence came back that said, he didn't do it. So he served 18 of his 32 year sentence at that point. So he had a lawsuit against the police, a $36 million lawsuit against Manitoba County. So Catherine Zellner is representing Stephen Avery and she's known to, she researches your case and if she thinks that you're innocent, then she takes your case on and she does whatever she has to do till you get, till you're free. Right, she's, she's amazing. Um, I don't think I need to go into too many more details of the case, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but I will add, let me add some interesting facts. So in August of 2019, convicted murderer Joseph Evans Jr. wrote a three page jailhouse confession saying he accidentally hit her with his car and then finished her off. Okay, so this guy is already in prison for murder, so, you know, I, I don't know. Um, okay, so when I tried to connect with Teresa, I was able to connect with her. Um, she came through. So Teresa came through. She was happy, bubbly, you know, beautiful young woman. Um, she went on to say that uh, when everything happened and she crossed over, her dad was right there waiting for her, which was a huge thing for her. She was, it, for obvious reasons, you know. Um, so she went on, went over, checking in with her brothers and sisters, her nephews, her mom, her stepdad. Um, yeah. So I asked her, you know, can you walk me through that last day, which you know, she did. She said she got up, she got ready, and she went about her day. She had appointments at she had an appointment at the Avery Salvage Yard. She was supposed to photograph a van that was at Avery's house. I guess she had been to the property many times, and they had always were very respectful and treated her very well. So I guess she took the photo and she headed out. She said she left the Avery's property, which, you know, if you know anything about the case, if you've watched The Making of a Murder or heard anything about this, they said she never left the property. They said that Stephen and Brendan had killed her and that, she, you know, she was very much there. They had, they had attacked her, grabbed her, and I don't know, raped her and horrible things. So she said she had left the Avery's, Avery's property and she had heard someone honking at her. She looked in her rear view mirror she saw a man, a man flashing his lights at her. So she, you know, immediately thought, oh, something must be wrong with my car. She said it was an older pickup truck. She thought, but she wasn't 100% sure, but she was pretty confident it was an older pickup truck is what she said. She pulled over it. The guy jumped out of his truck and ran up to the driver's side. She thought maybe her RAV4 had a flat or something, so she too jumped out. Okay, so she jumped out, you know, thinking, oh my gosh, I must have a flat or something, and she's... She walked back to meet the guy and she was kind of looking at her tires. Uh, she said he said hi to her and overpowered her pretty quickly. 
So she said he had overpowered her and he threw her in the passenger seat in the front of his truck. She said at that point, she knew that it was a pickup truck. She said that, oh, the one thing that it was kind of funny. So the one thing she said, she said it was kind of a weird looking truck from what she could see. And I kind of chuckled at that because I drive a Ford Explorer sport track and I always laugh and call it my bipolar mobile because it doesn't know if it wants to be an SUV or a pickup truck. <laughs> So I got a really good laugh out of that when she said that. So she didn't know what kind of pickup truck it was. She was trying to figure it out, but she just didn't know. So he was fighting her, trying to get her down into the passenger side floorboard, um, but she was still fighting him. He told, okay. So he told her to calm down. We're just gonna have some fun and then I'll let you go. That's what the sick SOB said to her. So she continued fighting and shortly thereafter he punched her in the nose. Um, she went on to say she thinks that the punch knocked her out. So she said that she came to with the man raping her. And <clears throat> she said she knew there was another, there was more than one man there because she could hear a guy laughing uh, in the background. He was laughing and telling. Uh, wow. So she could hear another guy laughing, telling the guy to get it, do it harder. It's so sorry. It's so messed up. She said it was traumatic and I remember closing my eyes and praying, trying to block everything out. She felt like she was coming in and out of consciousness. At one point she remembers the one man getting off of her and the other man she had never saw before, but she heard him laughing. He was, he jumped on top of her. Um, she didn't recognize the first guy, but she recognized the second guy. That's interesting. She didn't know his name, but she recognized him. She'd seen him on the Avery property before. Okay, she went on to say, I asked her if she knew, if she knew his name, if she knew him. So she went on to say that she was pretty sure he was related to Stephen Avery. And she thought he was a nephew of Stephen Avery's because I guess they all looked similar. I don't know. Um, I asked if it was Brendan Dassey, the 16 year old who was convicted with Stephen Avery. Um, she said, no, he was older than 16. So she said it wasn't him. She also said, interestingly enough, I guess, um, the one time she had seen the 16 year old Brendan, she said that he was kind of chubby and more full faced. And this guy was, you could tell he was older and he was thinner. And so she knew it wasn't Brendan Dassey, so. Um, so at one point she came to, she was in and out of consciousness. She heard them discussing her car and what to do with it. She said her head was pounding, but she was trying to tell them that if they let her go, she wouldn't tell anyone. So she, I guess she had gotten that, she, I won't tell, I won't tell out. And he said, oh no, bitch, there's no way you're going free at this point. You know, again, she said she had was pretty much convinced prior to that, that they were gonna kill her. And at that point, you know, you, she said, you know, you just kind of know. Um, she said she was trying to stay calm and she was praying. Ugh. So the guy that she didn't recognize that, it, that um, originally abducted her, he said to the other guy, we need to call my dad's friend, he's a cop. You heard that right. We need to call my dad's friend, he's a cop. Isn't that interesting? Um, she said she didn't learn until later what had actually happened to her. She found out after the fact that she had been strangled and dismembered and then set on fire. She talked about how horrible it must have been for her family to discover she was dead. Uh, I asked her again, you know, did Brendan Dassey or Stephen Avery, did they do this? Did they have any part in this? And she said, absolutely not. I already explained who the guys were. That's who did it. You know, no, they didn't do it. She went on to say that she understood why her parents, you know, were angry <laughs> for obvious reasons with the Avery and Dassey family. She said, I, I totally understand because they made it look as though they're the ones that did it. You know, so... It's just so hard. I, 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 yeah. 
anyway, that's all I was able to get from her. Um, you know, Stephen Avery had that $36 million lawsuit against Manitowoc County. And for her to hear them saying, hey, let's call my dad's friend. He's a cop. I mean, that pretty much tells you that the police were responsible in some aspect for framing Stephen Avery and his nephew, Brendan Dassey. It's sad, you guys. So... All right, guys, listen, that does it for me. But listen, just be safe. Wash your hands. Wear your mask. Be kind. Treat other people with respect. Check in on your elderly neighbors. You know, if you have friends that are sick, you know, ask them if you can get them anything, you know, and just stay safe, guys. And listen to the stay at home order because the morons that are out there, let me tell you, I had to go to Walgreens today to pick up a prescription. And these moronic people, every time I drive past the grocery store, when the grocery store parking lot is freaking packed, that's not staying at home. That's not quarantining yourself. That's not social distancing. That's everybody running to the freaking grocery store. And I'm telling you, I live in a decent sized town and we have tons of grocery stores and they're all packed. And it just pisses me off, you know. It's just... Yeah, I just want to be done with this, you guys. I'm just over it. So I'm sure you are too. All right, guys. Take care. Bye.